Hello and welcome back. I'm Bball Joe and this is Railroads Online. We're here with Doris, Doris Lovin, at the sawmill. Yeah, and everything over on this side is fine. However, we have a big kink in the road over here, which we have to fix. I've been derailing there so many times now, and it's finally time I fix it. And if we're lucky, I'll take you up the double helix to the iron ore mine, because that's exciting. Let's level with what we have going on here. This turn is barely acceptable. I it, it, It's a little tight for, for Doris, for the Eureka, but it's doable. This turn, however, is not doable at all. And there are options. There are things that we can do here. Ideally, I would like to move everything to the left a little bit, like about this far. We don't need to stretch out a lot of things, and I like to move it that way because I ideally... I don't want to relay every, that whole triangle over here. However, if that's the only option, then that's the only option. And I'm not really quite 100% sure <laughs> at this point what the right answer is. We could also shorten up the grip here a little bit, put that uh, switch back to back. I do know that's not recommended, but it, it can work. It can work. And as long as you can see the different switches where they are, you're probably fine. But yeah, this turn is also a little sharp. So yeah, we got we got to start somewhere. And the first start is take care of all of this nonsense. I even if I'm not going to put them back to back, I will put them in a straight line behind each other, and that is the first goal. The other goal, there there is a there's a line over there that I, again I don't want to move everything, but nothing we have here is written in stone. Oh come on, let me let me do the thing. Nothing we have here is written in stone. As you can see, there's a little kink in the road here. And starting here, we have a straight, straight line again. And I would like to keep that if I can. But everything else, I don't care about that much. This turn can easily be moved back and uh, turned a little tighter. There's, there's no problem with that. The turn that we see on this side, I guess, could, could get some lovin', take some, take some TLC to get around. But honestly, that that turn is not terrible either. It's Nothing here is terrible, it's really just that one kink over there that is derailing me, and I derailed with Doris for the first time going up to uh, the Helix that I showed you last time, and it's just frustrating when it happens, because you know it's preventable. It's preventable by just doing a better job connecting your rail, and that's, that's what we're going to try to do today. The one thing that I know is, give yourself enough room to actually get things done, and then you can get things done. That's It sounds really easy, but it's... Uh, it's always tempting to be like, ah, I don't really have to do X, Y, Z because X, Y, Z and uh, Epsilon. Yeah, let's call, it, let's call it that. Epsilon is German for Y, but I think it's a more fun way to say it. As you can see, this guy is also a little higher than we are on this side, which is not ideal, but, well, we'll just make it work. <laughs> no problems there. I Obviously, we're not going to get a constant grade out of here at all then, and that is that is okay. The first thing that I need... Ooh. Ooh. What, what happened here? We can... Yeah, here's what I have to do now. If I would put the, uh, the switch back to back right now, exactly where it is, it would float. It would not look good. It would not be effective. It would not be helpful. And that's, that's just bad. So what we're going to do is place the switch um, first. Usually I would... No, that's, that's the wrong thing. Um, and this one is on the left. We want to turn out to the left and I want to switch on the right so it doesn't clash. But what we're going to do is just use that little bit of track that I just laid. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully... Actually, this this feels, this feels fine. There shouldn't be anything wrong with this. And this may be able to connect to the place that I want to. Very possible. This is a very quick uh, undertaking. It's very possible. <laughs> There's not much else to say there. I do think I would benefit... Yeah, th this is a pretty sharp turn. And this is why everything was laid out the way it was laid out, but I think we, we can adjust this. Let's just get the rail over here, take you back a little bit, and this piece feels long enough for what I want to do. So let's do that. I need the left turn out with the right switch. I, I think... I think I'm making this actually possible. And in that case, all I will end up doing is 
uh, take, come on, there we go, that's fine, is take the uh, 90 degree crossing that we started with at the beginning of the episode and move it just a tiny, the teeniest, tiniest bit over and that should make everyone's life really, really easy. I like it. Or better or worse, let's figure out if this was worth it already. Because if I can make this turn a little bit smoother, we're already winning. So, okay, I'm going to start turning now. I, I like to go really far away from, from the switch before I do things. Uh, meaning turn, and now I feel like there's a kink here. Yeah, that's, that's too much. I do feel that if I were to start from this guy, I have a lot more wiggle room to connect... Um, like nicely over on on this switch so that's what we're going to do start on this side i can start turning sooner and then i have a lot more wiggle room to straighten out again i think that will be a lot more prudent to go to go that way i do know some some of you or some people on the internet um say start um just from the other side but i think this will be fine you, you, you see what i'm saying i am now not completely aligned with it but i have a lot more room to make uh, to get myself aligned perfectly. And maybe maybe that turnout is just a little better now than it was a second ago. I would argue it is. Now, I don't know if the Eureka can go over this. <laughs> I, I don't know that at all. But um, there's, there's only one way to find out, which is later on, drive over this with the Eureka. And if it worked, great. If it didn't work, not great. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Uh, this guy. I want... Um, relatively straight, relatively straight connection is really all I want. I think up to here, you're flat, you're level. And I should probably just use variable grade because I do know this is all a little bit um, in the air, but that's okay. So, nope, <laughs> we're going to do constant grade. I do prefer constant grade whenever I do this, but every once in a while it's just... Makes your life a lot harder, but in this case, I want to get a turn that can get up here in a reasonable, reasonable manner. That feels good. This turn doable. It is. It doesn't feel that much different than before, but I want to see. I want to feel this out. See if this cross that I'm going to put in here is worth it at all. If it's not, then it's not. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. But I'm going to start out with continuing a straight track by placing this guy down first. Then get the rails out, start on one end where you have that connection symbol, go to the other end, have the connection symbol, now you're still wiggling. Press the left alt, now you're not wiggling anymore. That's that's where I want to be. And I will try to place uh, the 90 degree crossing pretty close to here. That's good. Give me the rail again, give me the crossing. Every once in a while, has problems connecting. I mean, this is fine. That we can wiggle over a little bit. If this one connects, we are really, really good. I'm going to do the same thing I did a second ago. Start near uh, near the shorter turnout where you don't have a lot of wiggle room and hope that you can make the turn. I'm going to say I can't make the turn unless this turn back or switch back or... No, it's not a switch back. Switch back is on a mountain. But this uh, swan neck, let's call it that, is... I'm gonna go if it's better than what it was before. It's not perfect, but if I wanna get a lot more perfect than this, I would have to um, just remove a lot more rail, and that is, uh, it's not my favorite thing to do. Sometimes it's really necessary, but I just spend forever getting the double helix to go, so I just want this all to work well enough. Well enough is all I'm going for. Is this, can I, would I, would I drive a locomotive over this? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out once and for all, and very easily by simply driving our Eureka over this. You're not floating. That's important. I do know some um, some people that like to do this. Run uh, run the groundwork actually through the sleepers because this is how it looks in real life. But you know how much work that is. <laughs> I I can't. I can't. This is. It's not my job. I just want to play a game. I can't. I can't justify doing that. So we're not. Um, tiny bit turn. Tiny bit turn. I mean, this is a million times better than what it was before. This, I, I will say, it's still too sharp. 
I not happy with it. Got to got to get got to get better. So my next task is to find a curve that I'm happy with. And um come on, let me let me get rid of you. Find a curve that I'm happy with and then marry it up with these guys that are already here. And I will have to take these back. That will this will definitely be a big swan neck. But sometimes every once in a while that is probably okay. I don't think that's a that's a huge deal. So I'm assuming we're gonna end up somewhere somewhere along here. Sure, why not? And in that case, I would like to have some good connection to that um, rail that's over there already. So maybe I can just put it right there. You use the things that you have available because then you don't have to guess too much. Yeah, this this um, right here, I think. Give me two. Give me two 90 degree crossovers, just back to back, and I will see if one is better than the other one. We still have to do the groundwork. There's just can't get can't get away from that. Can't do it from this side. I have to do it from this end to the end where I want to go. Why? Because the uneven slope. Very important. There we go. It kind of connects. Good enough on that one. And then if I do need to use the second grade or the second crossing, I will just do that too. You go there. We'll call that good. Yeah, we'll call that very good. So where can this guy go efficiently? I will actually try to use some real um, options here. I'm gonna do the same trick where I'm straightening this out first, like so. Now we're straight. If I now click um, left alt, it actually connects in a nice fashion. All I have to do now is allow it to take a turn. So I'm gonna place that one, and then I do know the Eureka can easily handle 20 degree turns. But I'm hoping that it can connect to one of these switches more easily than others or other times. Uh, 20 degrees is all I'm gonna give you. So give me, I'm oh, sorry, 15. Give me all you can do here. So again, 20 degrees, 20 degrees is all I want. And I don't wanna connect there but I may be able to make this work. Not a perfect turn, but we are. <laughs> this is what, 1800? Whenever the railroad got started in the US. Um, and I think this is more than appropriate because it's in a pretty good location right now. That should not be a big problem to connect um, the rail that we have to this piece. Well, it's a little more cricket than I expected. <laughs> what do you know? That's just part of the game. So where do we have more uh, more options? We have more more length on this side. So that's what we're gonna do. Does this make it more ugly? Um, I would argue it makes it more um, opportune. Whatever it needs, we're gonna provide, and this is not gonna work. But this that is not a problem. That's not a problem at all. That kink that is terrible. And I'm showing you all of this because I believe this is a huge part of the game. Is it the best gameplay experience? The first time I played this, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I returned the game. I was just like, nope, not worth it. And then I slowly but surely started to understand what this game was actually trying to achieve. And I started to realize it's not about uh, just building track. It's about building a network that functions. And that alone is more than enough reason for me to keep playing this game because it is not easy. It is not easy to make a large functional network that all your trains, all your locomotives, all your wagons can run on. And um, you have to take into account the weight of your wagons now with the update. That's why that's why I'm playing this again. Uh, the weight of your wagons as well as the incline of anything. Incline of all your um, tracks that go up a hill. And there's a lot of hills here if you look at the map at all. So there are a lot of reasons why this is fun. That feels pretty close. Um, I think I can do a tiny bit better. Not a lot better, but a tiny bit better. Let's do this. Let's give me the shortest piece of track that doesn't look terrible. That will put me right here. Hmm. I don't like what I'm seeing. 
I honestly don't like what I'm seeing. I think I can't go here, but what I can go is somewhere right here. I know, I know, I'm, I'm going back and forth here a little bit, but if I put something like this, and we can easily, uh, don't set it to all, because then I will delete something I will regret later. If we can set it to this, and I think I can do this freehand a little better than uh, with the with the curve tool now, because I do know that the curve that we're doing that we're putting in here is going to be less than twenty degrees or twenty percent twenty degrees, yeah. So I feel pretty confident that we can just pull this off. This is a piece of straight. This is a piece of just a light curve, light curve again, light curve again. Connect there. I would say this is a piece of beauty. Just art. And now I'll do the same thing here. Would it be nicer if this was a straight connection? I don't know. I don't think so. I think this is this is just nice the way it is. Um, long spines and one straight. That that will totally work. And now this one we just have to fiddle in again to get well back to the track that's over there. But that's that's one of the easier tasks today, I think. Let's get this one connected. Um See, what do we do here? What do we do here? Start from here. Start from here. Yeah, that's good. That looks great. It does have to turn over here pretty soon because we have to be able to get uh, connected back into that side. And I can see that there's a little bit of mismatch between the gradient here and on this side. And it's much easier to start from the higher piece than go into the lower piece. So this should be fine. Now, if we can connect this, I think I have solved all the derailing problems that I had with the with a lot of different vehicles for a long time, just because it didn't plan well. But I don't think you're gonna plan well in this game, especially if you play the first time. You may see a couple things and we're like, oh yeah, this is easy, and you do your first track, and then two hours later you realize, oh, I should have done X, Y, Z because reasons. And that's the game. And then you find the first mountain, you're like, oh, what do I do here? What's the best What's the best uh, track to go up there? What's the best path to take? And the answer is there are multiple. It's not just a one, one answer game, which is another reason why it's great. I am happy with this, happy enough with that track over there. This turn, yeah, you're a little sharp, but I think you're not too sharp. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Eureka says, nope, this was still too sharp, which uh, to then I would say, all right then, back to the drawing board. But I hope we, we're getting pretty close here to what's going on. So let's, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. I will, there's a little mismatch. I'm going to fix that. I'm okay with this. I, I don't mind snaking the train back a little bit. Actually, trains look really nice when they do that. So I, I appreciate this. I do understand curves add a little bit of resistance. Curves um, are a little bit of a, I don't want to say hazard, but a problem for, for some rails or for some trains. So um, take it lightly, but for right now, I'm happy with this. Uh, yes, give me all groundworks. Take this away. Stop building that. Thank you. And sure, yeah, that should be a smooth enough turn for what we want. All of this, of course, is nonsense now. As you can all go away, definitely you. Yeah, this was a turn earlier and that was just too sharp. Make sure that your groundwork stays where you need it. <laughs> very, very, very important. Um, that should be fine. Don't press R. <laughs> R, R is getting me every time. And it's just this weird leaning on your keyboard that just, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm, I don't need it. I don't need it for anything. I don't lean out the window that way when I'm, when I'm in the train, I just walk out the window and that's fine. Cool. Now, this piece should be a walk in the park compared to everything else that we've done. So let's see if I can actually keep my word on that. Nice piece of straight track. Beautiful, and now we can go back in a turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to follow this curve somewhat centered with max spline lengths. I have learned that that makes the best curves. This may be a little sharp, but I think we're going to be fine because I do know that the, the curve that was in the groundwork was acceptable for the train already. 
So yeah, I feel pretty good about this one. This is, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. That curve right here may be a little sharp right at the beginning, at the beginning, but I think we're gonna be able to get over that as well. This looks terrible, let's fix that. Um, there you go, much better. That's good, that signal is set correctly. That signal is set correctly. The signal over here, just wanna make sure that I address it. Yes, there's not, I, I do like having these these blocks underneath it. It does help you see them when uh, when you don't pay the right attention. So definitely gonna do that again. You, you just connect right here. That looks nice. I could actually see myself increasing those uh, gradients for those uh, when I use it, but I think this will be fine. I feel pretty good about what's going on here. I don't know about this one. Could be a longer swoop. But I, I just want to drive. I just want to drive now. There's a there's a hole there. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. No problems there. I do probably have to uh, fuel up the loco a little bit, aka put some put some wood in the in the burner, and then we can make it to the double helix. I hope you're excited. The loco got refueled, and the water temperature is rising, but we still have some boiler pressure from um, earlier, so. Just get this moving. We are pretty full. I have made a trip up to the iron mine. Two trips, actually. The first trip was going up 3%. And guess what? It didn't work very well. I had to I had to strip, I think I ended up with making four wagons up there at a the time. And that didn't feel right. The Eureka is better than that. So I started doing the Helix thing that you hopefully saw last time. You watched something from me. But yeah, I got that one done. And then I tried that again. And at the very end, um, only doing one and three quarter degree incline did not do the trick. You, you could not get up to the iron ore mine from that location. So I added another helix around that helix and we're heading there right now. That helix is, oh yeah, this is fine. This is fine, we're going full speed. That turn, I'd say that turn is fine too. They're not bouncing or doing anything funny. And then this one is pretty, pretty easy. Okay, cool. So yeah, no, I uh, decided to just do another helix and see where that gets me, and that one actually made it up. There are a couple pieces in there that are 2%. At the very end, there's even a, a slag in there that is 3% uh, inclined. And that is the one I don't know if we're actually gonna make it because we need all the momentum that our little train here can get because the first big bridge is 3%. I did check that. Not that one, this one, but uh, you'll see which bridge that is. Once we get there, and I'm sorry that this is a little laggy in this area, quite quite surprising. If I look at the train, it's a little better. Cool, yeah. Um, but yeah, that we, we need all the all the momentum we can get to get up that bridge, and that's why we're starting at the sawmill because this is part of our run up. I did try it once from about here, and it was okay, but it was painfully slow. So we'll see how this goes. I'm pretty sure we can make it. Part of me thinks maybe, maybe not. So we we'll just, we just have to make sure that we can actually do something useful. The next thing, though, let's let's pull up pull up the map here while while we're doing something. The next thing we have to do. So we're gonna go around just right, um, just to the right here. Coming up pretty soon. There's a there's a bridge that's gonna turn right. We're gonna go up right, and then there's a big plateau that we're gonna get on. That's what a double helix is on. And then we're just going to follow the mountain ridge, like this way, um, all the way up to the iron ore mine. And once we're there, we're great. However, there's no turnaround up there. From from the direction that I came, there's no good way to add a turnaround for, for anything. And I don't mind that, because that means, one, I have to... Well, I built a, I built a little rail yard, so I could put the locomotive on the other end and pull um, everything down. That could be nice. I could just... I leave the tender on this side and everything will be fine. But I also didn't mind just pushing it down because everything was downhill, so it kind of worked out that way too. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't doesn't feel wrong. I like this bridge. It doesn't feel wrong. So there are a couple options, but the best option I think is uh, to build track down to the smelter, which is my next big task, and uh, take the more, more uh, normal route to get down from the iron ore mine. So then we have a full circle around. Hopefully, 
I can get a couple of the hoppers, hopper cars, to actually make it there, because that's important. There's some big pillars there that I'm using to get this bridge going, but this is 3%. And as you can hear, the local is working pretty hard, but once we get under the first part of the helix, um, we are in a pretty good shape to continue, and then um, everything afterwards is new, new. If you haven't seen that before, so that's what that's why we're that's why we're playing this, and I am talking over it simply because I like it. Uh, yes, this this is the piece that where if I don't have all the momentum that we just had, I'm not gonna get past this because it slows down really, really hard, really, really hard, and I sometimes wonder if I can even make it, but. So far, I've made it every single time, and I haven't changed this piece yet. Look, I, I even made the, the bridge pretty on the on the upper part, just with the shorter pieces, but I'm pretty sure I can't do that here. So, yeah, just a little more. And here, here's the thing, if you have a Eureka, you want to use it, right? You can't just you can't just go out and say, well, Eureka, yeah, it's underpowered, can't use it for anything. I mean, yes, it doesn't have that much power and it's super heavy, and it has a, it's the only one that has a big tender behind it that is super heavy too. But overall, it's a pretty train and I want to use it. And tell me, is this Helix terrible? Or is this Helix pretty, pretty, pretty appropriate? Let's go with that. So this is a one and three quarter uh, percent incline. Oh, this guy. I would like chop you down and it may cost me my train don't follow my train thank you <laughs> i saw that one now a couple times already and it was bothering me but as you can hear the locals actually speeding up a little bit which is which is awesome and we're gonna have what is what is happening you see that it still has the the saw selected i think um i saw the saw just popping up on a couple different areas but we have a couple straight pieces in here, and those straight pieces should be enough to speed me up. But really, this this whole thing is pretty close to not working, but it's just working for the Eureka with eight cars loaded like this. Again, um, actually let's look, let's look what our what our different cars weigh. Can I can I there we go. There's a weight. So this one weighs 8100 kilograms. Okay, so that is with six planks or six boards or whatever you want to call those. Uh, compared to this guy who weighs, I'm scared to fall off, so I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> that was close. This one weighs about half that, which makes sense just by volume. Um, it's uh, <laughs> that was close. Just by volume is a lot less, but uh, you can definitely get more logs up there. Um, I prob well, technically, I can only get two more cars full of planks, or I can fill all the cars full of planks and then get four extra cars, sorry, full of logs, and then get four extra cars full of logs. And that is, I think that's exciting. That means the Eureka is pretty useful for this trip that we're doing right now. This is also at max, it's a 20, uh, 20 degree curve. Is that right? Yeah, 20 degree curve. And Eureka is just making that work as well. Obviously, the curves add a little bit of friction. So the straight pieces that are actually part of this, there's one coming up right here, are very, very important for us to get the speed that we need to get the last little bits of incline taken care of. Now, most of the other trains that you can buy, and I even consider putting a porter just in the front or in the back as a little support, um, we'll do this probably much easier, but I would like this run to be available to every locomotive that I have. Which still means I have to make the smelter, uh, the smelter run 1.75% um, wherever we have to go up. Obviously downhill pieces don't really count, but it's, it's important. What is so wobbly over there? That was weird. I think there's a little dip in the bridge, and it's speeding me up, but it's also causing some havoc um, on the tender. But that's fine. We, we are pretty close. So this was the original track over here. I haven't cleaned up yet. That was the original track and it got up there, but it went 3% or more and only four cars. So that didn't work. This was the second attempt that you saw after I finished the, um, the helix, the first part of the helix. And you see what the difference is, just that one helix. And it was essentially, it was impossible to get up to the iron ore mine to even even consider getting that getting there 
because I was about this far, this far below, like this, this height, and you can't make that up. You can't make that up um, once you get closer, and that was the problem. I tried to go far off, and I, I won't have my mouse here, but I tried to go far off into the plateau, so that's the iron on mine. Try to go around the mountain into this area and try to make another helix there, but because we have to connect the other rail line into this area as well, there was no chance for me. There was no chance to make that work. And that there was no there was no other choice than going back and making the double helix work and um, adding this connection. I did try to hug the mountain as much as I could. It didn't always work, but I kind of like what I came up with. There are a couple bridges when it was appropriate, I think. There are the um, wall wall sides um, like there are there the wall groundwork. That's pretty neat too. And then yeah, there's just a lot of nature. <laughs> If you like nature, it's pretty good too. Yeah, this is not the fastest trip up here. That was never the point. It's a train. A train will go whatever speed you let it go. And also the game is a little more forgiving if you go slower speeds and fast speeds. Don't worry. Downhill, this thing can pick up a lot of speed. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's, it's a thing. But I do hope, and I, I'm not sure yet, I do hope that we pick up a little bit of speed because there's a little piece right here that is 3% again. And I haven't tried that one yet. That one, I don't know if it's going to work. And I really hope it does, because going downhill or going down back with all the wagons that we have right now will be really annoying. Stopping anywhere here will be really annoying, because I do know that it can start up on 1.75%, but it takes so long to get to any type of speed. And this, what you see right now, is pretty much max speed, so... It takes forever to get here. <laughs> the wheels barely, barely move. I'm not going to do that right now because that's just going to get really, really boring. That's a one tree just, just survived there, so that's nice. So this bridge, this bridge is about 3% or a little more. So let's see. see if we can make it. I have to clean that one up. As you can hear, Loco is slowing down a little bit. We don't have a lot of momentum. Don't stop. And right after the bridge is when we go down from 3% to like three quarter of a percent. There was still, there's still an incline here. We're, we're not done yet, but I think, I think most of the train is moving in the right direction. And here we are. I built a little rail yard out, um, just three, three lines. One is essentially just to be able to bypass whatever is here. One is to store some hopper cars here whenever is appropriate. And the other one is obviously just the, the drop off. And I really, really like the, <laughs> call it the new drop-off way, uh, where you just drive by, you don't have to stop every time, but I have to actually time this well, because last time I did this, I did lose a couple planks that I didn't want to lose that way. Um, and also, I don't want to stop. This should work. You first. You next. You next. Hey, you, and I have to go back for the for the logs. And we're also losing a couple there. So that was a fail. <laughs> it's fine. Lost a little bit of money there, but um, I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I don't need you to go full speed. Thank you. Oh, th this was a mess. This was a mess. I tried so many ways to get... Um, a turnaround track in here, but it would just not, it would just not work. It was, there was no chance to get it done. That was annoying. So there's 15 there. I, I'm pretty sure I lost a couple already, and that is okay. We're, we're going too fast to do this. Uh, slow down. <laughs> that, that's the other thing I learned. Use your, um, your wagon, uh, brakes. They can help with, with a lot of things, actually. Um, stop going that way. <laughs> if the regulator was going the right way, it would have switched a lot earlier. So, now go this way. That's much better. Yep, so I'm just going to unload this one, and that's, that's really it. That's all I want to show you. We are up the hill, we made the double helix work, and we got our sawmill area rebuilt in a way that's actually functional now I, I did forget to turn the brake up here but yeah this all looks good and next time i'll just bring up more stuff and i hopefully have a hopper with me as well because that's important how many do we have left 11 
Yeah, we definitely lost a couple couple planks there. So don't do what I did. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll see you again next time. Bye.